Hi, this is Jordan with Zenata Consulting. In this video, I'm going to go over the common use cases for using Zoho Flow, which was taken from our June 2023 monthly tutorial series on Zoho Flow. If you find this video useful, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe down here in YouTube. And if you have any questions, also feel free to leave a comment down below or head over to club.zenata.com where you can drop questions in our forum where we can then go ahead and answer them on our weekly show, Azaz, which is Ask Zenata Anything About Zoho. Without further ado, let's head on into the video. I want to talk about why you would use Zoho Flow as an if this then that tool. What are the common use cases you'd actually solve with this from a business perspective? You can kind of break these into two main categories, passing data between Zoho apps or passing data from a third party app to Zoho. And I guess you could also have a third category of passing it from Zoho to a third party as well. So if we look at the first use case of passing data between Zoho apps, the first question you'll commonly ask is why would I need to use Zoho Flow to pass data between Zoho apps when most Zoho apps have their built-in default integrations together? The answer to that is simply that the built-in default integrations are great and definitely use them if they suit your use case, but sometimes you will have a use case that falls outside of the default integration. A great example of that and the one we very commonly use it for is Zoho Forms and connecting into Zoho CRM. For those of you who are familiar with Zoho Forms, when you build a form in that form builder, you do have an integrate button that allows you to go in and integrate it directly to CRM. What that allows you to do is create a single module entry inside of CRM. So for example, you could have a form that just creates a lead or a form that just creates a contact. But what if you needed it to do more? That's where Zoho Flow is going to come into play. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into Greg's folder and piggyback off of it a little bit. And let's say I was creating a flow for a form and that form was a customer engagement form that was going to generate a deal inside of your system. And inside of that form, you're collecting contact information, you're collecting company information from that contact, as well as information that you're going to use to generate the deal. The reason you would need to use a whole flow here is because you technically want to create three different module entries here. You don't just want to create a deal, you want to create a deal and a contact and a company. Maybe create all three, maybe update them if they already exist, but there's three modules involved. And that means that you're not going to be able to use the default Zoho forms integration with CRM. Flow allows you to bridge the gap between those two apps. And if you use this use case as an example, you could then build a flow which will trigger on the form entry. And then it will, for example, take a look to see if that contact already exists in your database as a lead or a contact based on whether it already exists, take an action, then create the account, then create the deal, etc. So that's a very common use case. If you have a Zoho form that you need to be involved with multiple modules, would highly recommend using Zoho Flow. Another slightly different variation of that that is a common use case is if you have a Zoho form that only needs to create a record in one module and it's the contacts module, but you don't want it creating duplicates with leads that already exist. Problem with the default forms integration is it will check for duplicates if you want it to in the module you're creating the record. So it can see if that person's email already exists in contacts, but it can't check other places in your system to see if they already exist as a lead, for example. Flow can. So you could have a flow that triggers on form entry, searches contacts to see if the email exists. If so, great, just update that record. If not, check to see if a lead exists. If so, convert that lead and update it. Or finally, if we don't have them as a contact or have them as a lead, then create the contact. So the use case that's solving there is better flow of data to reduce duplicates and keep a cleaner database, which is obviously very important if you have lots of forms and more data coming into the system. Another great example would be if you have something happening inside of CRM that you need to automate the rest of your business process. Most Zoho users are using Zoho One and using things like CRM, desk, projects, etc., all in tandem. So Zoho Flow can be used for a use case of an issue gets raised on a deal inside of CRM and we need to automatically generate a desk ticket with that customer so that the support team can take it from there and deal with that issue so that the sales team can continue working the deal in the CRM. You could create a flow to do that that says CRM X status or X field gets flagged on a deal that goes and kicks off a desk ticket, grabs the contact from the deal, makes that the customer all that kind of th stuff. So it just automates that data flow between apps rather than having these manual handoffs and manual data entry points. So that's all great within Zoho apps. The real power, in my opinion, comes from when you have a third-party app that you're trying to tie into your Zoho ecosystem. So in a perfect world, you use all Zoho apps. In reality, 
there are going to be other best in class apps that fall outside the Zoho ecosystem that you want to use as part of your business process. And they end up feeling disjointed. So all of your Zoho apps feel really well tied together, but then you have this one third party app. Maybe it's just your WordPress website. Maybe it's Shopify. It could be Trello. It could be whatever third party app you're using that you like using in your business that just feels disjointed from the rest of your system and your CRM usually is your core. So what you can do with Zoho Flow is collect what are called webhooks or other direct connections. So I'm going to go ahead and create a flow. Don't worry about tracking what I'm doing here. Greg's going to go more in detail on this. If I go in and create this flow called demo, put it in the Greg folder. In terms of triggers, I can trigger from specific apps and Zoho does have a good inventory of apps. So if I go in here, you'll see if I choose to configure any apps, I've got a whole swath of third-party apps that do integrate with Zoho Flow. And if the app that you're using is here, great, you're going to be all the better for it. So for example, I'd use Shopify. So if I say I wanted to do a Shopify integration outside of the default, you'll see that Shopify does have a beta integration with Flow. And so I could click that. And then if that app exists, I can use triggers like carts abandoning, carts updating, checkouts being created, et cetera. So it's all kind of pre-built here, which is awesome. That's the ideal. Ideally, every app you use just happens to have a default connector inside of, inside of Flow and you're just off to the races. In addition to that, though, you can use webhooks. Um, so what a webhook is, if you're not familiar, just raw data being passed to a URL. When you configure a webhook, it will give you a unique URL with a unique identifier that you can then say, hey, app over here, I want you to take data, package it up and send it to this place. Zoho Flow can then just collect that raw data in and let you do things with it. Um, usually we pass that on as a JSON payload if you're a technical person. If you're not, don't worry. Most web webhook configures you'll have in things like Gravity Forms will just let you specify the type, you'll choose JSON. It's pretty straightforward. So this use case comes in a lot with website form capture, actually. So while Zoho Forms does integrate really well with the Zoho apps, sometimes you already have really good forms that are on your website using something like Gravity Forms or Ninja Forms, anything like that. And you don't want to have to rebuild your website. You've got 20 forms on there. You just want the data, pretty simple stuff, first name, last name, email to come through into your system. It would be a huge hassle to try to recreate those all with Zoho Forms and you'd like to avoid that overhaul. You can do that by just leveraging Zoho Flow to connect those form data pieces in. And to do that, all you do is go in and create a webhook form capture, go into your WordPress site or whatever your third-party app is, choose to send a webhook on a certain action inside of your third-party app, and just say, you know, I want it to send here. At this point in time in that third-party app, it posts it over to Flow, and then Flow will handle capturing that data, processing in any way you need, and then popping it into your apps. So that's a huge use case that we cover. And then the other one will be supplemental flows that you'll do with a third-party app. So Shopify is a great example of that where Shopify does have a default integration with Zoho and books and inventory, let's say. And let's say you have that up and running, but there's just one little thing that that existing integration doesn't do. And it's, if a sales order fails, I need to blah, blah, blah. You can go ahead and set that up in flow so that it just supplements the existing integration to do one extra action that's then if this, then that. So if this happens in Shopify, I need this to happen over in books. That's a, an account adjustment that it wouldn't normally do with the default integration. You can go and set that up here. Sky's kind of the limit on use cases. Greg did mention this is a very versatile app. Really, it comes down to how well your app that you want to use plays well with others. But Flow is really just a, it's just the tool to connect apps and pass data between them and imagine just use your imagination sky really is the limit but the most common use cases we do see on a day-to-day -day basis are form collection passing it around or auto generation of things like projects or desk tickets um, shop by sales order things like that